Hi everyone, my name is Kwame Iwuku. I am the founder of Cagletics and the creator of the Cagletics Cognos Analytics School. And in this video, I'm going to go over the course curriculum so that you get an idea of what you are going to be learning when you enroll in my school. Now, it is an online course, so you can access it with your phone, your tablet, or a computer. So a lot of you know about me based on the video I created back in 2017 called The Tips and Tricks by the Cognos Jedi. Ever since I created that video, I had a ton of requests from people from all over the world asking me very basic questions about Cognos Analytics. So in this course, I'm taking 15 years of my Cognos Analytics Jedi skills and I'm packaging it so that anyone from anywhere in the world can access these skills. So to get to the course, you are going to type courses.cognitics.com and you are going to arrive on the welcome page. And if you are already logged in, you can click on my dashboard and that will take you over to the course. Now you can also start your free trial now so that you get an idea of the kind of experience you will be getting when you enroll in the course. So I'm going to click on my dashboard and it's going to take me to my courses and I'm going to resume the course and it is going to open the learning portal. So once you arrive on the portal, the videos are going to be on the right hand side and the chapters and the modules are going to be on the left hand side. You have the ability to watch the chapters in full screen and you have the options to watch it at a faster speed or at a slower speed and you can also change the quality. So I organized the course into modules and chapters and when you select the drop down arrow you see all of the chapters within a module. Now after you complete a chapter you are going to get a check mark by the chapter. So the most important thing that I want to share with you is in the report session you notice that i have 28 chapters within this section or this module but we break to create a data module and then we continue again with the reports you know i add six more chapters we take another break to create another data module and then we complete this section with 16 more chapters so let's go ahead and review the course curriculum i'm going to open it in pdf and i'm going to and I'm going to zoom out so that it is easy to see. I'm also going to make it full screen as well. So let's scroll over. We are going to first start with the Getting Started section where I show you how to get free access to the Cognos Analytics trial version. And then I give a 44 minute overview of the entire Cognos Analytics system. Now these are all part of the free trial. So you can go ahead and sign up now to enjoy these chapters. Then we go through a long lecture where I talk about business intelligence and Cognos Analytics. And then I talk about some career problems and how you can overcome them. And then we go over the formula concept. Then we continue with the overviews and then we start creating our first data module. So we create our first data module and then we start by creating some dashboards. Now dashboards are relatively easy to learn and understand. So I did not want to intimidate my younger users by jumping into the more complex stuff quickly. So you are going to have some fun with the dashboards. And I think that very quickly, you are going to be creating some very powerful dashboards that you can demo at your next job interview. If you just graduated college and you're having a hard time getting your feet in the door in corporate America, you can start building this portfolio within a week of taking this course. So next, we are going to move into reporting. Now reporting is probably the most important feature within Cognos Analytics. I think reporting, data modules, and dashboards are three critical pieces that you have to get comfortable with. 70% of what you are going to be doing as a Cognos developer will be in reporting. So we spend a lot of time in reporting. We are going to start by creating a list and we go over the, beginning, the beginner concepts. My whole methodology is to first introduce the basics to you to get your feet wet and then we continue to review more advanced concepts. So after the list, we work with queries, we do an intermediate version of the list, and then we discuss filters. Then we move on to prompts, and then we discuss some more advanced concepts within the list. Now the list is going to be extremely important. The list, the cross tab, and the charts are three key objects that you have to get very familiar with. So once you know what a list is, what a filter is, what a query is, and what a prompt is, you're already looking really good. So next, we are going to look at the basics of the chart. We are going to create some basic bar charts so that you get familiar with the properties of the chart and some of the key things you need to be aware of. And then we look at some advanced concepts. Then we review some cross tab basics and then some advanced concepts within the cross tabs as well. 
So we are not even halfway done yet, but you already would know what a list is, what a chart is, and what a cross tab is, and you would have already created a data module. So you'll be feeling very good about yourself when you reach this section. Now, I recommend that you don't skip any chapters because we are going to be making some changes along the way, and I want you to follow and build with me as you go. By the end of this course, you should have a very powerful portfolio that you can demo for prospective clients, uh, consultants, or even, or even hiring managers when you get an opportunity to interview. So we go over master detail relationships, we do some sectioning, we do some page breaks, we do conditional styles and conditional palettes, and then we create our first advanced reporting dashboard. There are currently 13 advanced chapters, and these chapters are meant to test your skills. So after you've, you've seen the list, the cross tab and the chart, you're going to create your first advanced reporting dashboard where you combine some of what you've learned. So, so the first one you're going to be creating will be the ability for you to embed a bar chart into a cross tab. Then we are going to look at one of my favorite features, the repeater table. You're going to learn how to use the repeater and then you are going to learn how to do drill throughs from a master report to a detail report. Then we are going to move on to another advanced chart where you insert another bar chart into a cross tab row. The first one you learn to insert it into the column, but now you learn to insert it into the row and you are going to be using sectioning, you are going to be using master detail relationships. So very quickly you see that you are going to be combining some of the key things you have already been learning. After this, we discuss render variable using boolean, we discuss style variable using string variable, they are two different things, test source variable using boolean and string variables, and then we take a look at conditional blocks and some textual features within Cagnos Analytics. And then we move on to the third advanced dashboard where we create a KPI dashboard where you, know, you get to use some of your render variable and red style variable concepts because I want you to be able to color a section of a repeater table based on how well or how poor a department is performing. So we are going to change the background color if the numbers reach a certain threshold. This is a very important and powerful concept that will be helpful for you in your careers. So then we move on to some charts. We review eight very powerful charts within Cadnos Analytics, and then we create our fourth advanced reporting dashboard. Okay, so then we take a break to add another data module. I want you guys to get familiar with some sample data that IBM again provides for us. So once we have the sample sales data module, we are going to go ahead and we are going to talk about data types and casting. So when I first started working as a Cagnos developer, I had a rough time with data types. I did not understand the concept of casting, so I had a rough time and I used to have some very nasty errors. So we go ahead and we discuss data types and how you can use the casting function to get the data to behave. <laughs> okay, so then we do if then else statements and case statements. Those are going to be very powerful. As a Cagnos developer, you want to be able to take your data and you want to be able to massage it to fit the requirement. You don't always want to depend on the ETL developers to create columns for you to use in calculations. If you know how to write if then else and case statements, you can create as many categories as you wish. So this is important. Next, we are going to talk about the count function. We are going to look at some key calculations using scope. So this is where you learn how to scope your calculations. Case in point, you can create a total revenue for location or total revenue for country or region, or you can find the average performance ratings for a department, for example. You can use this scope. You learn how to use rank to limit the amount of data that is being displayed on your reporting dashboard. Rank is very, very fun and interesting to use. And then we move on to the union and join lecture. Now, so now I have to pause here for the, for the union and the join because it is important. It might seem like everything is important to me, but uh, I'm training you guys to be contractors. You know, contractors or freelancers or some of the best Cardinal developers on the planet. Unions and joints are going to be important because every time you work for clients, their data is not going to be sitting there looking pretty, waiting for you to, to have fun creating reports and dashboards. No, you are being brought in there to solve some very complex problems. And if you know how to do your joints in the unions, you will not have any problems at all because you have to know how to combine data, federate data, clean data, if you are going to be a contractor, okay? And I teach you all of these techniques within this course. So in this lecture, I teach you the three key things you are supposed to be aware of if you are going to be doing unions with your data, and also joins. You are going to know what a left join is, a right join is, and an equal join as well. 
So after this lecture, we are going to create a data module where you get to use the join and union features within the data module. This is a very powerful chapter. We are going to be learning a lot in this module. I'm excited about this chapter, obviously, because you are going to be learning a lot. So next, I'm going to show you how to do a union using a query, because you can do your unions using a data module, but you have to know how to use a query to do a union. So in the next chapter, it's also another very cool trick that you need to learn as a Cognos developer. There might be instances where you need to write code to pivot, right? If you have if you have repeating rows, you have to know how to pivot it. Because believe you me, your customers are going to ask you to create single rows, maybe for their employees or regions. You know, usually customers do not want to see certain items repeated. And even though you can use a cross tab, in some scenarios, you, you have no choice but to write some if then else statements to pivot your data. You are going to learn how to do that. Then we are going to learn how to use the token. Now the token, I love the token. Like the token and the repeater, if you know how to use the token and the repeater and you can combine them in a dashboard, you are ready to be a Jedi. Believe you me. <laughs> you become the god of reporting dashboards if you know how to combine these two features. The next thing we are going to do is we are going to enhance our store sales calculatics data module. We are going to be adding more calculations to the data module because as a Cognos developer, you, you need to find ways to augment your data models or your data modules so that your users do not have to keep coming to you for simple calculations. Okay, so then we are going to look at the report expression within Cognos Analytics, very, very cool trick. And then the next thing we are going to do is we are going to create joins using queries. So you, you are going to learn how to do a join using the data module, and then you are going to learn how to do it using a query as well. Then we do another advanced reporting dashboard where I embed a chart into the list you know, we do some master detail relationships, we use conditional formatting. I mean, this is a very, very cool one as well. Then I show you how to create a drill from a dashboard to a report. You know, the dashboarding section is different from the reporting section, but now you can create dashboards and create a drill from the dashboard to the report. Very, very cool as well. And then we create one of my favorite reporting dashboard, the Store Sales Jedi reporting dashboard, where you get to meet Tom Brady, the Georgia Bulldog, logo the weekend and beyonce this is a good one this is a very good one this is one of my favorites if you learn how to create that you are almost you are this close to becoming a jedi because i combine so many of the different techniques that it is almost ridiculous i had a lot of fun with this one then we start creating some active reports now active reports are really really cool if your employees are not using active reports you need to enroll them in this course because when your employees start using active reports, they could potentially change the entire perception of the business intelligence team in your organization. So after active reports, we are going to learn how to use some relative date functions. Very, very, very cool and powerful as well. If you can, if you know how to use dates, you are looking very, very good if you know how to use dates because you can create your rolling 12 month, you can calculate your revenue from last year, you can compare the average performance ratings for this quarter compared to last quarter, right? Once you know how to control the date, you become extremely powerful, almost Jedi. After you learn all about this, we are going to create the relative days reporting dashboard, and then we create the ping dashboard, and then we create the store sales scorecard. Now we are going to create a more complex data module because initially I didn't want to I didn't want to in intimidate my students by jumping into some complex if then else statements. I didn't want you all to 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 run away and give up, okay? We start off with a very simple data module and then in the end getting close to the end, we are going to create a very complex one. We add some calculations at the data module level, okay? All right, so then after this section, we are going to look at some administrative features within Cognos Analytics. You have to learn how to schedule reports and schedule jobs. You have to know how to create a view because, you know, views, many users do not know how views work. So they end up creating a hundred reports when in fact they could have used a prompt and some views instead of creating hundreds and hundreds of reports. That becomes a big headache when you have to migrate from one environment to another. So I can teach your employees how to use report views. And I'm going to talk briefly about summary tables and aggregate tables and why they are important. Those are very important ideas that I think you should discuss when you go to a job interview. 
because you have to really know the difference between a detail level table and a summary level table and how they can affect the performance of a dashboard or a report or even how to build a cube. If you're going to build a cube, you have to be aware of the, the, the level of granularity and how many elements are there at the lower levels. Otherwise, even though you're creating a cube can solve a lot of your, your problems in terms of performance, if you don't have the right ratios and you have a lot of detail level data at the, at the grain of the cube, you might as well not even create a cube. All right, so the story section is blank at the moment. I'm going to be adding the stories. They are sort of dynamic, so I've not created them yet because they are going to tie in with you as you are taking the course. I'm going to be applying some of your feedback into my story because stories are more for presentations. So part of my formula strategy that I'll be teaching my students ties in back with why you are taking this course. So the stories are going to come, I'm going to create at least two stories so that you learn how to create stories as well. So in the end, you are going to be able to answer 100 interview questions. Uh, if you're able to answer maybe 80 out of the 100, you are officially a Jedi. It is up to you if you want me to test your skills after the course. Most likely, I'm going to have you fix an error in a report. So I'm going to break a report and I'm going to see your approach in terms of how you are going to go about fixing it. So in this course, we are currently only going to be using relational data sources. There are no OLAP data sources, so you are not going to be learning about hierarchies and drilling down in terms of cubes. Like you are not going to learn about levels and hierarchies, right? We are not going to be using a data source, an OLAP or a DMR data source. So it's all relational. But 95% of companies out there use relational data sources, so you are going to be fine. So I hope that you have an idea of what you are going to be learning. Feel free to enroll in the free trial. And if you have any questions, let me know. And when you are ready, you can buy the course. Now I have a sweet deal for those of you who enroll during the summer. Because it's a new course, I have an introductory price as well as I'm offering one extra free year when you enroll this summer. I'm only accepting 100 students because I, I do not want to be flooded by too many requests. I'm currently working on contracts as well, and I want to be able to not be, too, not to be distracted too much. So I'm only accepting 100 students, and then once the enrollment completes, I may start taking new enrollees next year or very late during the fall. So if you want to get an idea of my teaching style, you can head over to YouTube and get an idea of the types of videos that I've been releasing. I started creating these YouTube videos to help as many people as I could. And then my next idea was to find a place to, to store all of my skills because I felt that if I had a portfolio, I would not only have an advantage if I went to an interview with a portfolio, but it could also reduce the amount of time it took me for me to complete my work. Because if I have a portfolio and I already have the templates, I can just reuse a template for any of my clients. But over time, it, it evolved into creating a course because we currently have the technology out there. There isn't any course that is remotely close to what I have created. It's far better than anything that the kids are learning in college at the moment. And I say that with confidence. You are learning a skill that is transferable. Cadmus Analytics is used by some of the biggest banks on the face of the planet. You see, Citigroup uses it, Wells Fargo uses it, Bank of America uses it, SunTrust uses it. So that is it. I hope to see you in my school and I hope that you take my advice and you build a portfolio. Cadmus has been good to me and hopefully it is good for you as well. Thank you.